how about now? There we go. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Let me start all over again, please. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah. Uh, so this is the problem with doing these audio tests. I do that much of uh, changing things before and then I get sidelined in the Discord. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's Jeff and Rich's fault. <laughs> um, today we're talking about, let me start again. It should be coming through now. Today we're talking about audio on the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2, the Rodecaster Duo and the uh, Streamer. X, uh, because um, with those, we now have the ability to, uh, first of all, uh, connect your uh, wireless mic. So if you've got a Rode wireless mic, either the Rode Wireless Go 2 or the Rode Wireless Me. Uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, for all the things in the chat, letting me know about it. And I, I should have probably been paying a bit more attention, would have noticed it sooner. Um, but I digress anyway. So I'll say once again, thank you to Rode for sending me the Wireless Me and the Wireless Go 2. Uh, just very briefly to uh, recap, <laughs> um, the difference between these two is that the Rode Wireless Go 2 has a single uh, receiver but then two transmitters so that means there's two mics but uh, all coming to this single transmitter uh, whereas uh, receiver sorry whereas the Wireless Me has a transmitter and receiver but the receiver also acts as a, uh, a mic in itself so uh, that's a sort of a slight difference there so this one would be the receiver. That one could go on the top of your camera and you would be able to uh, pick up your uh, audio from there. And then this one could go on at somebody else. So you've still got two microphones with the wireless Mi. Uh, it's just a sort of slightly different uh, configuration. They've also got something on the wireless Mi, which is called Gain Assist, which is uh, intended to help give you sort of better quality audio without you having to uh, sort of manually play around with any settings and things like that. However, we're not talking about the receivers in this case uh, because with the uh, recent firmware update for the Rodecaster Pro 2 and also for the Rodecaster Duo and with the Streamer X, uh, you can just pair these directly with your uh, your device. So that means that, uh, you know, potentially no more wires. So I have already paired this one with the Rodecaster Pro 2, uh, with the Rodecaster Duo, I should say. Um, if I just come over to my, uh, my top-down shot here, uh, the way that this works is uh, the Rodecaster Duo has uh, two XLR mic inputs at the back, um, but then you can choose to use one of those uh, channels uh, for a wireless mic instead. So if you go into that particular channel here, uh, just in the same way that before uh, we've been able to choose between whether we want to use that as a line input, a, an instrument, or you can choose the different type of mic, uh, now you have the option to select a wireless mic. So uh, it's not that you've got this in addition to those two XLR uh, uh, inputs on the back, but rather um, they can be uh, they can be paired you know in place of one of those. Um, so this one is currently paired. So if I just switch over to this mic now, then now this is the audio that's coming from the uh, the Rode Wireless uh, Wireless Me, uh, and I look at the Rode Wireless Go 2 when we look at the uh, the Stream X because that has the same ability. Uh, if I just clip it here, I should probably have done that before. <laughs> There we go, I'll just clip it there. So that's what the audio sounds like. Um, I've not done a huge amount of processing and this isn't intended to be uh, like a full audio test just because we've got really heavy rain going on at the moment and the aircon going, but I will do a full sort of head to head between uh, the wireless me and the wireless go to and do some uh, more uh, official testing. But this is intended to just show the process of, you know, being able to have all of these, uh, these different mics uh, connected. So uh, you do have all of the, uh, the processing capabilities. So if I turn off uh, the processing at the moment, you might hear there's uh, a lot of uh, background hiss and noise from the aircon and the rain. Uh, and then I can turn the, uh, the processing on. So all of the same processing abilities that we've got with uh, you know, the onboard Aphex processing of the Rodecaster, uh, you can now apply that to your, uh, your wireless mic as well directly in there. And obviously the point about this is, whereas previously, if you are using a, a Rodecaster Pro 1, for example, if you want to connect the, uh, the mic up there, uh, then what you would need is you would need an adapter, which would be uh, something like this. This is the Rode VXLR uh, Pro. So this is basically a, uh, an XLR on one end, uh, and then on the other end has got a 3.5 mil jack. So then you would use a, uh, the cable that comes with the, uh, uh, the Rode Wireless Go 2 or Ro Rode Wireless Me, plug that into there, and then that would plug into the output from your receiver. So uh, if you, this is if you were on a Rodecaster Pro 1. So then you would have your receiver, and it's got an output there, uh, and then this would then become the receiver for your wireless mic. So this is how previously you would have had to do it on, uh, on all of these devices, but now it's kind of like eliminating uh, this step. So that's the whole thing that... Uh, 
uh, that we've now got with the ability to pair just uh, directly on board. So in the Rocaster Duo, there's also, uh, let me just switch back over to this mic. Uh, with the Rocaster Duo, there is also another way to connect a microphone, which is through the headset port, because what they added, which isn't on the Rocaster Pro 2, is that on the front here, we've got a, a headset port. And that actually takes a TRRS, so that that's got a mic input as well. So if you're using something like the, uh, the NTH100M, uh, which has the, the boom mic, so let me just show you what this one looks like. Uh, I've uh, been using the NTH100 headphones for a while and I don't use them on my streams because uh, I don't really like this look <laughs> on a live stream or on a Zoom call. Um, but the headphones themselves are absolutely awesome. But Rode sent me uh, this with the boom attachment to test, out the, uh, to, to test out the microphone functionality into the Rodecaster Duo. So uh, once again, you've got all of the same onboard processing, but this is actually, whereas the Rode wireless uh, uh, you know, if you're pairing a wireless mic, um, that, that, then that is taking up one of your XLR channels. Uh, this one is actually uh, an extra channel. So you can have, therefore, three mics connected to the Rodecaster Duo. Um, and so this one sounds something like this, if I just uh, swap over now. Uh, this is the, uh, the audio that's now coming over directly from uh, the boom mic in here. Um, and uh, it sounds it sounds pretty great. As I say, it's not a formal audio test by any stretch, uh, but the quality of audio that you're getting from it, if you are either a gamer or somebody who doesn't mind being on a Zoom call with something like this, <laughs> then uh, uh, then yeah, the audio is pretty pretty great. And you can go in and adjust all of the settings as well. So uh, I've got the noise gate on. If I just turn that off at the moment, I'll turn off all of the processing. So there's the uh, the sort of the background noise coming through uh, and a few things that haven't been adjusted. But if I toggle the processing back on again, uh, then now you're just hearing the uh, the audio coming through from uh, from here uh, with uh, with that processing applied. So this does then allow you to, as I say, connect potentially three mics up to the um, uh, up to the Rodecaster. I've got to say a big thank you um, to but uh, Rob Galbraith, because uh, he saw that I was doing this live stream and just dropped me a message um, about the headset in particular, or the headset port rather. Uh, and it's something that I totally would have uh, uh, missed out in this live stream. So uh, a big thank you to him, which is that um, obviously the headset is a 3.5 mil uh, input. So that does mean that you don't, you're don't you not actually just limited to headsets. Anything that's got a 3.5 mil um, you know, output from your microphone. So that could be something like, uh, in this case, the first road product I ever bought was this one, uh, the Video Mic Go, uh, quite a few years ago now. Um, but this one has a 3.5 mil uh, jack on the back, um, you know, intended to be plugged into a camera. Uh, but you can therefore plug it into um, the uh, the input for the headset instead. So obviously you'd probably need a little bit more of a length than, uh, than this one that is intended to go into a camera. Um, but you could then use a mic like this if you've got some sort of uh, boom mic uh, that is 3.5 mil, uh, then you can have that go into the, uh, the headset as well. One thing to note about that though, is uh, you do have to be uh, careful about the particular cable that you use. So there are two types, well, actually there's three types <laughs> of uh, 3.5 mil jack. Um, there's either TS, which has, uh, if you look at the little rings on the uh, on the thing, maybe let me show you in a different camera. This might be a bit, 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 bit better. <laughs> Uh, where are we? Let me get it underneath. So here you can see there's these two black rings. Um, and actually this one is TRS. So that bit at the bottom is the sleeve, that bit in the middle is the ring, and that bit at the top is the tip. So you get ones that are either TS, which is just basically the tip, and then the sleeve. So that would be something uh, like a uh, just a, a mono plug. Um, this one here is TRS. Um, so tip ring sleeve. Uh, so this is what you're typically going to have going into, uh, you know, maybe a mic like this um, or a set of headphones. Now the TRRS is tip ring ring sleeve. And that basically is for a, uh, a headset where you've got something uh, just like this. In fact, if I plug that, uh, unplug that, you've got those two different uh, rings in there. So if you're gonna be plugging a mic uh, directly into this, uh, uh, this socket, uh, then uh, you don't wanna be plugging in with a cable like this, with the TRS. Uh, you want one that is this adapter, which is TRS to TRRS, and it's got a different uh, color on the other end, but that's got the three rings. So that one would go into there, and then this one would plug into your, uh, into your uh, microphone. 
So if you are using or want to have a setup that is, uh, you know, maybe a mic, maybe a wireless mic and a shotgun mic um, that is, a, you know, a 3.5 mil uh, connector on it, uh, then actually this would be a great way to connect that up. Obviously, you could also use the, um, the VXLR Pro. Um, and actually, this is probably slightly more suited to it because this includes uh, a sort of mini transformer inside. Uh, so it is a, a, a sort of balanced uh, signal so it's going to reduce interference specifically if you are you know having to trail the uh, the shotgun mic uh, some distance uh, then you would want to use probably something more like that but it's just a nice little option to have that in there but therefore another potential option for this one on the front would be to just use a lavalier mic so if you've got a lavalier mic and you want to just plug that uh, directly into the front uh, you can uh, you can uh, do that. Once again, you have to be aware of the uh, the type of connector that you've got on the lav mic as well. So this one, if it's a TRS, again, you need to just make sure you've got that connector. In that case, you would use a connector. And by the way, all of these things that I'm talking about, you can find in the description. Uh, but for this mic, you would use something like this. Again, from Rode, uh, but it's the uh, SC4 3.5 mil TRS to TRRS microphone cable adapter. So this would allow you to uh, take your, your love mic, uh, plug it into the, uh, the socket there, and then plug the gray socket into the, um, uh, into the, uh, the Rodecaster. Um, and then you would be able to use a love mic just directly uh, plugged into the front of your Rodecaster Duo. So this is actually a great uh, use case because um, if you're somebody who doesn't like to you know, have a mic in shop, maybe on Zoom calls or things like that, uh, then we can just sort of replace the uh, regular mic here I'll put this love mic on here now uh, and then turn that one up and turn this one down. So now uh, I'm just using a love mic uh, that is, uh, is going directly into the, uh, the Rodecaster Duo into that headphone socket. So there we go. We've got uh, three different types of mic. Uh, well, actually now uh, multiple different types of mic that we can just connect up with the, uh, the Rodecaster Duo. So uh, this has now become even more of my favorite Rode device now that, <laughs> now that I can just plug a love mic directly into the top. Uh, why I honestly had not thought of that uh, sooner, I don't know. But thanks again to, uh, to Rob Galbraith for uh, dropping me that uh, mail before. I'll just switch back over to the, uh, the regular mic. Looking at how this is on the Stream X, uh, because it's worth uh, talking about, there is the same kind of functionality um, that, we can, um, that we can have these three multiple mics connected. Um, this really turns the Rode uh, Streamer X into a great device for people who are maybe not wanting to do all of the audio routing. I mean, I love the uh, Rodecaster Duo and the Rodecaster Pro 2 for this ability that we've got to do some really sort of advanced um, audio routing with it, you know, in Zoom calls and Ecamm and all that kind of thing. Uh, but the Streamer X, being such a compact device um, it's such an ideal thing and of course the fact that it's got a built-in capture card to so that your camera can come in from there to be able to have this all-in-one thing that can control your audio your video um, and even in such a small device uh, be connecting three mics so let's look at how that works um, on the uh, the Streamer X, you've got on the back an, uh, an XLR cable in the back there. You've also got the headset connector um, uh, over here, rather. And then you've got the headphones out there. Um, and then uh, here on the front, we can choose which of those we are, we are uh, controlling. Now, if you're using Rode Central, uh, so there are two bits of software that you can use with this. Either you could be using Rode Central or you may use uh, Unify, which is currently in beta for the Mac. Uh, but if you use Rode Central, you've basically only got one of these mics at any given time that you can use. Uh, and the way that you choose which mic you're using is by pressing on this dial here. So this is controlling the volume, uh, or sorry, the gain on the, the mic. So if you press this, uh, this is going from mic to headset, uh, sorry, XLR to headset mic to uh, wireless mic. And we'll talk about setting that up in a minute. Um, and then you can also toggle that on and off and sort of mute the mic. Uh, this one is what you're hearing in your headphones, either from the headset um, or from the uh, regular headphone socket. Uh, so you can adjust the volume there and then pressing this will mute that in your ears. So if you just want to sort of mute the, the audio in your own ears, you can do that by pressing there. Um, and then this one here is toggling on and off the camera. So if I press that, you see my camera goes off, press it again and it comes back. So uh, I've already done a lot about the Streamer X, but certainly for Zoom meetings, if somebody's just 
looking to level up on their uh, Zoom video and Zoom audio, this is a great all-in-one solution because it gives you this uh, flexibility of uh, having the two things in the one device, being able to control your video and audio. When you're on a Zoom meeting, you don't have to be clicking around looking for that uh, mute button and so on. And you can clearly see uh, whether you are muted or not just here. So just unmute in Zoom, take off your uh, video or put on your video rather, and then you can always control it from here. Uh, the other thing, which I won't go into too much today, I've already covered this at length before, is the presentation mode. So uh, as well as these smart pads being able to use, be used like you can on the Rodecaster to uh, you know have sound effects and things like that, um, then uh, you can also have it so that this is going to control your presentation. And these things all turn this kind of like white color. Uh, and then this would be next slide, previous slide, and so on. So a great device for, uh, for Zoom uh, or Teams meetings or online meetings and things like that, as well as for content creation. Uh, but let's look at the process of connecting this all up because um, I mentioned that uh, when you're using Rode Central, you're basically just choosing the mic input that you want. However, when you use Unify on the Mac, which is, uh, as I say, in beta at the moment, but uh, coming to uh, coming to the Mac, these are already here, but just in beta. Uh, but this allows you to basically have access to all of the different inputs. So if I uh, just unmute these for a second, you're not quite going to hear these just yet. Uh, you'll hear them in a moment. But if I unmute all of these, uh, you can see now that I've plugged my uh, lav mic into the back here. Uh, so the lav mic is now plugged into the back and I've got my uh, XLR mic, which is actually over here. It's this one, the short MV7. Uh, but these are now both plugged in. And as you can see by uh, looking on uh, the uh, the app here, uh, both of these levels are sort of bouncing up and down. So it is actually receiving both of those uh, and you can adjust them independently of each other. Uh, you can also come over here and adjust the level on here. So uh, once you've got things set up in Unify, you don't necessarily have to have Unify open all the time. Uh, I could be in here and you're not going to hear the difference right now. I'm just doing this to, uh, to demonstrate demonstrate, but I could turn the level of this mic down and you can see how it's gone right down there uh, on uh, in Unify. So by adjusting the dial on my Stream X, as you can see just down below me, uh, then it's actually adjusting the level that's coming into Unify and I can adjust that up and down accordingly. So you have still got control over all those different mics. So I can click on the button here to switch over to the headset mic uh, and then I can adjust the level of that one down and you can see the effect in Unify. Now that, that second one along the uh, headset is now at a lower level and I can turn it up again. So you still have the individual control, uh, but they're all coming into Unify, which means that they're therefore all coming into, you know, whatever software you're using. So if you are using Zoom or something like that, uh, then uh, those uh, those things, those three different things will all be coming in. So I just wanted to uh, then take a look at the, uh, the Wi-Fi option in here. And uh, for this, what I've done is I've got the Wireless Go 2. So I'm just going to show you the uh, the pairing process because it's pretty simple, <laughs> uh, which is that you switch on the uh, the device and then you go over to here. So now you can see I'm on the uh, the Wi-Fi uh, option just there. And now if I just press and hold this, you'll see that the little Wi-Fi uh, button starts to flash in a moment. Uh, and then once that flashes, uh, if I turn on this one and start pairing, it should uh, connect. There we go. That looks like it is uh, paired. Let me just turn this one up a little bit. Or is it? <laughs> or is it? Famous last words. <laughs> uh, let me try that again. Of course, this will go into uh, a technical failure. It always does when you do live demos on a live stream, doesn't it? <laughs> Things never work quite as they're intended to. Hmm, let me see. Maybe I'm pressing something wrong here. Bear with me. <laughs> now I've just turned it off. Hang on one second. Bear with me. It doesn't appear to be working. Of course it isn't because it's a demo. That's what happens on demos. Uh, I'm wondering if maybe it is a... Uh, maybe I haven't charged this one up enough. We'll just try this once again. If not, I'll move swiftly on. <laughs> I'm doing something wrong here. It's uh, it's always human error <laughs> with me. 
Oh, well, I will move swiftly on. But the point is <laughs> that uh, it worked so well when I did it with the, the duo that uh, <laughs> I must be doing something wrong. Um, but the, the other point about the, uh, the wireless mics, though, is that you can, uh, you can also use those with a lav mic as well. So it may be that if, you are, uh, if you're wanting to use a lav mic, the, they also have the, uh, the lav input just up at the top there. Um, so you can, uh, you can plug into that. Uh, let me just show you on this one instead. Uh, where are we? Where's my top-down shotgun? <laughs> that, that's thrown me a little bit off. I don't mind admitting. <laughs> uh, there is a, a, an output just here somewhere. There we go, that one. So you can plug a, um, a lav mic into that. Um, and so you could still use the wireless functionality. But if you don't want something as large as this sort of clip to your, uh, your top, uh, then you can just plug a lav mic directly into it, which uh, I can show you on uh, this one. If I take my other one here, this is the, now the wireless me. So I can remove the uh, I can remove this little uh, wind shield from the top here, uh, and then I can plug that one into the top like that. Uh, and then now I've got the it's still wireless, but it is using it from the love mic. So I'll just switch over to this now. Uh, so as you can hear, this when it's close up, it's actually uh, you know obviously a lot better. But if I put it down here, you'll notice there's uh, going to be a lot more sort of room noise. Uh, but now basically that is just still a completely wireless mic. Uh, but it's a little bit less uh, intrusive if you don't want a big thing like that uh, stuck to your, your top. So I can also route the audio though. Let me just come back, I'm back on this mic now. Uh, I can route the audio from the Streamer X into the Rodecaster Duo. So some people have been asking like, can you use Unify uh, with the Rodecaster Duo? So what you've got in uh, Unify, if I just come back over to the, uh, the software, uh, over here, you've got uh, your different inputs here, so I can adjust the uh, the level of the uh, the different mics here. Uh, if I had <laughs> if I had done the right thing and successfully connected the wireless mic, uh, then that would be uh, showing up here as well. Um, but you can also go in and edit uh, or adjust all of the. Um, uh, the advanced processing here. And what I really love about Unify versus uh, Rode Central is that on Unify, you do actually get the live charts, just like you get when you're on the Rodecaster. So if I come over to the Rodecaster here uh, and go into the audio processing, for example, for my main mic, uh, and then go into any of these things here, uh, you can see that as I'm, you know, with the noise gate, for example, you see this live chart. When you are looking at this, and adjusting these settings in Rode Central, uh, you don't get the live chart. However, you do when you are using uh, Unify. And this is actually really useful because the point about a noise gate is, uh, let me just bring this one over here. Uh, the point about a noise gate is that you want to be able to see what's happening with your voice and what those levels are so that you get the, uh, the threshold set right and uh, you know the, where the gate's gonna open and close basically. Um, incidentally, if you're interested in uh, learning more about uh, all of the audio processing, uh, I did do a long live stream about this uh, a few weeks ago now, probably about four or five weeks. Uh, however, you may also be interested in the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 Masterclass, soon to be renamed <laughs> the Rodecaster Masterclass, uh, because it will be covering the Rodecaster Duo and also the Streamer X. Uh, but in here, I go into a lot of detail, uh, and really part of the reason for creating the course was uh, the advanced audio routing is one thing, because it's the, the question I get asked uh, a lot about on coaching calls. So when people book consultations with me, uh, they're asking about their specific use case with the Rodecaster Duo, the Streamer X, or the Rodecaster Pro 2, and how to set it up to route the audio in there, you know, their Zoom calls, their work calls, and things like that. Uh, but the other thing that I get asked about all the time is things like the noise gate and those kind of setups. Uh, and so for that reason, uh, it's useful to have an understanding of the foundations of dynamic audio processing, so you know what is actually going on, what these things are doing. So that is one section here, which gives you an understanding of, you know, what e these things even do, sort of the noise gate, the compressor, and so on. Uh, but then we also go into uh, another section, which is just all about the advanced audio processing itself. Uh, and so there we go through all of these different settings, because what I find is that the uh, the, the concepts may be OK <laughs> or clear uh, what you know what they're supposed to do. However, you know, the noise gate is supposed to you know stop audio coming through when you don't want it to essentially and very, very brief layman's terms. Uh, but then when it comes to actually understanding what all these different things do uh, in terms of the settings, like if I come back over to here for a second uh, and go back into that setting there, you know, what is the threshold, the attack, the hold, release, range, and hysteresis? 
basis and how do you get those all uh, set up? Uh, and then when we go on to some of these other things like the compressor, uh, the exciter and so on, what do all of those things do? And also what order should you, uh, should you adjust all of those in? Uh, well, that is exactly what is covered in the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 Masterclass. Um, so uh, I'll leave a link to that in the, uh, in the chat and you'll also find it in the description as well. Uh, and that's the best way to sort of get up and running uh, quickly with the Rodecaster Pro 2 and the Duo. Uh, and soon I'll be adding in a whole section just about the uh, Streamer X. Um, however, I digress slightly. <laughs> so getting back to uh, the Unify software uh, for a second, um, then yeah, so you can go through and adjust all of the settings for your different mics. Um, but what Unify also has here is we've got uh, the different outputs for your headphones uh, and then also the stream mix. So this is the sort of main mix uh, that would be going out if I was to select the correct mic in, uh, in Ecamm, like I didn't do right at the beginning of this stream. Um, then that is where I'd select that. Uh, the headphones is what you're going to hear in your monitors. Uh, however, there is this additional output that you've got for the stream output. Uh, and so here what I've done is I've actually just selected that as the Rodecaster Duo, uh, one of the, the USB inputs. So effectively, the audio from the Streamer X is going into the computer, uh, but then I'm just sending the stream back out to the, uh, to the Rodecaster Duo. So what I can do now is I can actually switch over. So now you're hearing me through the uh, Streamer X going through the computer, uh, and uh, maybe I need to just mute one of these mics, hang on. <laughs> You're now hearing me going through the computer uh, and then into the, uh, the Rodecaster Duo. I'm probably... <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, but now you're hearing this getting through there. Uh, but what that means is um, that what that means is that you can actually use Unify um, if you've got a Streamer X and a, a Rodecaster Duo, uh, maybe one using for a capture card uh, as, as well as, you know, maybe a, a mobile setup. Uh, but then uh, you can use the two of them together by feeding into, into that. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, then there is also the uh, ability to uh, use the routing in uh, Rode uh, Streamer X, and I did a, a sort of full walkthrough of this, or my first initial walkthrough of it, a couple of weeks ago. So that is in the uh, uh, description. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to do like a full tutorial style video on it. But here you've got the ability to also add in uh, different um, uh, audio uh, channels specifically for things on your computer, such as, uh, you know, maybe you've got, uh, I don't know, Spotify or some music playing, maybe you've got a browser. And so what it means is you can add some additional mixing into the, uh, uh, into the, uh, the, the Rodecaster Duo as well. So quite a few uh, different options that we've got with these really compact devices. And uh, I'll say it again, if you've already got a uh, Rodecaster Pro 2, then there's no need to think, oh, I've got to switch over to a Rodecaster Duo uh, because it basically does all of the same stuff. However, one of the uh, the things about it, though, is that you know if you are only ever going to be having yourself and not planning on doing a, a large podcast with lots of people or anything like that, um, then, uh, then yeah, you can... Uh, <laughs> just let me just deal with something in the chat here. <laughs> there we go. Uh, there we go. I'll just hide that user. There we go. Um, yeah, the Rodecaster Duo, for me, for all of the, the sort of onboard routing and uh, capabilities of the Rodecaster Pro 2, having it in the Rodecaster Duo is just uh, a real game changer. I think it's a really great compact unit. Uh, and you might be forgiven for thinking, you know, one's got Pro in the name and one just is called the Duo. Uh, but actually, for me, uh, I think that the Rodecaster Duo is every bit as pro as the Rodecaster Pro 2, except that it's just, you know, only got those two XLR inputs, but it has got this third mic input, uh, which arguably for me is even more in, uh, useful uh, in plugging in something like, you know, a lav mic directly into the, uh, to the front. If anybody's got any questions about these, uh, these uh, devices, then feel free to uh, let me know. Let me just check in with everybody in the chat. It's going to be a short stream today because I've got a uh, Kajabi uh, Zoom course that I'm running. And so there'll be a live session in uh, in a short while. Uh, hey, Parker, though, great to see you here. Thanks to everyone for letting me know about my audio. Isn't it always the case? Uh, hey, Michael, isn't it always the case that when you're doing a live stream about something, it's the very thing you're talking about that uh, uh, that you <laughs> or that I screw up? It's like when I did one about um, checklists and I got to the point of audio in the checklist and realized I had a different mic uh, selected. But uh, there you go. <laughs> Thanks for the update. I'm glad that uh, folks eventually got there in the end or I got there in the end I should say 
Um, yeah, if anybody's got any specific uh, questions, though, uh, you're thinking of buying the Rocaster Duo, uh, but it's not available in Japan yet. Or we're just, uh, just uh, it's worth holding on for. <laughs> I'm not sure what the availability is. You can probably get it from um, uh, somewhere else, though. I mean, I'm in Thailand, so I'll often find that things aren't available here, but I'll just get it from uh, uh, from Amazon in, in US or Amazon UK or, or one of the other stores. But uh, then there are, obviously, <laughs> there's obviously potential costs with that. So it just depends on how... Uh, <laughs> how desperate you are for it um but yeah it's just a, it's is an awesome awesome device um and and the thing between the rocaster duo and the streamer x because obviously most of the people that i'm i talk with in coaching calls and consultations and things like that um they are like business folk who are using these things for business and so uh, in that case you know I, I often now get asked you know which one should i get either the streamer x or the rocaster duo uh, and it really for me comes down to um the audio routing um the audio routing that you can do in unify is great so you can handle a lot of this stuff in there uh, but for me personally I still like to have the sort of hardware um, faders for my Zoom, T, uh, Teams, Discord, uh, Ecamm, and to have those all on a separate channel. And that's the real power of uh, the Rocaster Duo for me is the fact you have got an individual channel for, uh, what well, you've got three individual USB channels. So that means that you can have uh, Ecamm audio routing into your Zoom call, your Zoom participants routing back into Ecamm. Uh, you could potentially be running a Zoom ISO session. So you're bringing speakers in on Zoom ISO, feeding that into a regular Zoom call. Uh, and it's just such a powerful uh, audio routing device that... Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's if you want to go to that level of audio routing, it's absolutely fantastic. But the Rode Streamer X, I think they've just hit the nail on the head with a really great all in one device for uh, another whole group of people that I speak to that are maybe, uh, you know, just wanting to look a little bit better than their regular, <laughs> regular webcam and, and mic. And then, you know, you can tell them that, oh, for this one all in one package, you can actually just completely transform the way that you uh, you look and add a little bit of lighting and you've got an instant, uh, <laughs> instant professional setup on uh, on Zoom. So uh, that's all really I wanted to cover today. It's intended to just be an initial look at how to connect all of these different things up. And I certainly will be doing a full uh, full head to head of the uh, wireless me and the wireless go to as well. And there will be a, a formal tutorial a little bit more professional <laughs> on my uh, on my channel in due course as well. Uh, let me come to this one though for a second. Does Unify work with Rodecaster Pro 2 or stick with Rode Central? Is one better with the RCP2 or do I need the uh, to, <laughs> to get gas? The um, so with Unify, the Unify is software now. Unify uh, will not um, control Rodecaster Pro 2 in the sense that if I go over to Unify now. Here you can actually use, uh, let me just pop your comment down for a second there. Uh, here you can actually use Unify, um, the software. It's in place of Road Central for uh, Streamer X. So when you start up Unify, it will say, we see you have a, a Streamer X connected. Do you want to use that with Unify? And if you do, then you're not then controlling it in uh, in. Uh, Road Central. So you can see here that we've got the four mix pads. Those are there. You can turn presentation mode on and off. And you'll notice when I do that, the lights just down below me on the actual Streamer X change from the uh, the colored regular smart pads to this one, which is presentation mode. And presentation mode uh, looks like this. You've got next slide, previous slide, uh, put up a blank slide or put up a blank white or black slide rather, uh, start presentation and close presentation. So that's for controlling your presentation. But we're doing kind of like the setup of it uh, in here and I can go and change what is on these different panels. Um, so it doesn't control the Rodecaster Duo in the sense that you can do all of that. Um, however, it is a, a, an audio interface and it does have this thing that I mentioned earlier, which is as well as the headphone output, which goes into your headphones uh, here, um, and as well as the, uh, the stream output going into whatever streaming device, you can just feed that all into the Rodecaster. So at the moment, although I've got my mic going into there, I'm not actually monitoring it in there. I'm still streaming to everybody here. Uh, I'm streaming, uh, streaming to all of you by um the um uh by the the rocaster duo that's what's going into ecamm uh, however as you can see i can feed in everything from here into the uh, the rocaster duo as well 
So when I say it doesn't necessarily, it's not, it's not controlling the Rocaster Duo, <laughs> but it can feed into du the Duo. So if you wanted to add, sorry about that, slight technical difficulty there. <laughs> um, yeah, so in a sense, you, can, uh, you, you can't control the Rocaster Duo and, and like do all the setup with Streamer X, uh, but you can use it as this additional level of, uh, of mixing. Uh, so that's really where the uh, the power of it is, is that it can add that extra level of mixing um, to the Rocaster Duo on those individual apps that you've got on your computer. So uh, so I hope that uh, that answers the question, Melvin. Uh, sorry, my uh, my connection just dropped out or something for a moment there. Um, any other questions about the Rode Streamer X or Rocaster Duo? Do feel free to reach out. Uh, if you have any questions that uh, you're watching on the replay that come to mind, uh, then do also uh, consider joining the Take One Tech Discord. It is free to join. I'll drop a link into the uh, the chat, and you'll find it down in the description as well. Let me just do that again. I'm having one of those tech failure days today. I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> but if you join the uh, Take One Tech community, you can go and drop in uh, any questions that you've got there about Rocaster. We've got a whole uh, channel in there specifically about that. Okie dokie, before I have any more uh, <laughs> technical or emotional failures, I'm going to leave it there today. Uh, but for anybody watching on the replay, I'll go and uh, leave a link to some other uh, Roadcaster content over there on the right hand side. Thanks so much for watching and thanks to everyone who supports the channel. I'll see you all next time.